people of this community, of course, grieving the four teens lost in the mass shooting here just yesterday. Tate Meir, Madison Baldwin, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling, all victims of what the prosecutor calls a premeditated attack. 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly, a sophomore, is now charged as an adult with two dozen crimes, including murder and terrorism. We are told there is a mountain of evidence against this young man, including a video made just the night before and 30 spent shell casings here at Oxford High School. Our team coverage of all the latest developments begins tonight with 7 Action News reporter Jim Kurtzner and the suspect's first appearance in court today. Jim, fill us in. Carolyn, we're going to have more on that video discovered last night in a minute, but I can tell you we've gotten the first vivid description about what happened inside the high school here in court from the assistant prosecutor arguing to the judge that Crumbly remained locked up. He is. The prosecutor telling the judge he saw the surveillance video inside the school himself this morning. Honestly, Judge, I don't have the words to describe how horrific that was that happened on November the 30th. It depicted just before 1251 PM, this defendant entering a bathroom with a backpack. A minute or two later, he exited the same bathroom without the backpack, but with a gun in hand. The assistant prosecutor told the judge it was over in a couple of minutes, but Crumbly came armed with a gun and armed with intent. He methodically and deliberately walked down the hallway, aiming the firearm at students and firing. The parents of Ethan Crumbly, Jennifer and James, were on the Zoom connection with their son's court hearing. Yesterday, we were told that dad told his son not to talk, and they were getting him an attorney. Two attorneys today were court appointed. One of the charges is terrorism causing death. Prosecutor says the shooting continued. After children started running away from the defendant, he continued down the hallway, again at a deliberate and methodical pace, pointing and aiming inside classrooms, and had students who hadn't had the opportunity to escape. Before the arraignment, the officer in charge of the case told the judge about the evidence they found at Crumbly's house. The intent to kill, but still no motive, no reason why. Two separate videos recovered from Ethan's um, cell phone, um, taken in a search warrant, depicted a video made by him the night before the incident, um, wherein he talked about shooting and killing students the next day at Oxford High School. Further, a journal was recovered from Ethan's backpack, also dealing, detailing his desire to shoot up a school to include uh, murdering students. Now, you might have been able to tell that Crumbly was wearing what appeared to be a bulletproof vest uh, while he was in this uh, Zoom hearing. He sat motionless while the judge read all 24 charges, including terrorism, murder, that he could spend up to life in prison. And uh, she did agree with the prosecutor that he can be moved from juvenile detention to the main Oakland County Jail for better security and so that he can be isolated. We are getting word there could be additional charges coming. 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaquette has that part of the story. Simon. We know that uh, owning a gun means securing it properly um, and locking it and keeping the ammunition, ammunition separate and not allowing access to other individuals. After extending her deepest gratitude to first responders, including sheriff's deputies, and expressing deep condolences to victims and their families, Prosecutor Karen McDonald announcing a list of charges, including one count of terrorism causing death, four counts of first degree premeditated murder, seven counts of assault with intent to murder, and 12 counts of felony firearm possession. The accused shooter charged as an adult, meaning the chance of life in prison. McDonald also adding this about the chance of more charges in light of learning the gun was purchased by the accused shooter's father just days prior. We have to do better. How many times does, does this have to happen? How many times? It's possible there could be additional charges issued very soon when that investigation is reviewed and complete. While a motive for the shooting at Oxford High yesterday remains unknown so far, the prosecutor was very clear in saying this was a planned attack carried out for the purpose of taking lives, and she intends to treat this case as if the victims were her own children. We need to make sure and want to know that when we send our kid to school, they're safe. 
The prosecutor says a lot of work continues to happen in terms of the investigation, and she will be updating the public just as soon as there are any more developments. Live in Pontiac, Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. Carolyn, back to you. Thank you so much, Simon. The prosecutor awfully emotional today as she was talking about this case and talking about her community here. As investigators piece together what led up to this tragedy, we are learning more about the suspect, Ethan Crumbly. Seven investigator Heather Catalo is digging into the 15 year old's background and Heather joins us now with what she has learned so far. Heather. Caroline, I'm in the village of Oxford right now where the suspect lives and just like sheriff's officials, police here telling me they had no advance warning about this attack, but we are now learning some very concerning information that school officials met with this. Ethan Crumbly faced a judge Wednesday, just a day after he's accused of gunning down his classmates at Oxford High School. As detectives searched for clues about what led up to the shootings, the Oakland County Sheriff confirming what the seven investigators have been learning from several sources, that Oxford High School officials met with the teen and his parents about concerning behavior just hours before the shooting. We had no information from the schools, but we have since learned that the schools did have contact with the student the day before and the day of the shooting for behavior in the classroom that they felt was concerning. In fact, the parents were brought in the morning of the shooting and had a face-to-face -face meeting with the school. Sheriff Michael Bouchard not revealing the topics discussed during that meeting, only that his liaison officer in the school was not told about it. Bouchard also confirming the school allowed Crumbly to stay in the building after that 10 a.m. meeting and around 12.50 p.m. the shooting started. The sheriff previously acknowledged that a handgun shown on a social media account that's believed to belong to the suspect is the same type of weapon used in the murders. But law enforcement are also telling us the 15-year-old has no prior school discipline issues and no prior criminal record. We had no prior context and we had no uh, prior information that uh, this incident would occur. We haven't had any issues with uh, with that family or any weapons in the past. The sheriff also telling us they're now going through mountains of evidence, including notebooks, the suspect's phone, as they try to piece together exactly what motivated this horrific attack. Live in Oxford, I'm Heather Catalo, 7 Action News. Now let's check in with my colleague, 7 Investigator Ross Jones, with more on what the sheriff had to say today. Heather, good evening. Sheriff Bouchard spent much of his press conference today trying to dispel many rumors that have been circulated on social media, separating fact from fiction one day after this horrific mass shooting. Now, Sheriff Bouchard said that there was no record that the suspect had been bullied at Oxford High School or had reported any bullying behavior. There was also no history of any discipline by the school. The sheriff said there was no evidence that the 15-year-old sophomore had sought treatment for any mental health conditions and was not in the process of doing so. And Bouchard said he has viewed the horrifying surveillance video inside of the school, saying it appears that victims were shot at randomly and were not specifically targeted. He did not release any of that video today, but described the evidence prosecutors will be using in court. He came out of the bathroom, began shooting, moved through hallways, and back through hallways and was apprehended in the hallway. Never went into a room. If you weren't hit by a bullet, doesn't mean you weren't terrorized that day and won't have nightmares about it the rest of your life. Whether you're a parent, a teacher, or a student in that class, um, you know, going through that, that building in the wee hours of this morning, uh, looking at the disarray in the classrooms and the backpacks strewn across the floor, that had to have been an absolutely terrorizing moment in anyone's life. The shooter fired 30 rounds inside of the school and still had 18 bullets left when he was confronted by deputies. There is no consolation for victims' families tonight, but this could have been much worse. Carolyn? It could have been, Ross. He was cer certainly loaded uh, to kill, and you got to think that investigators are going to speak to these students who said they were warned and did not come to school yesterday because they thought something horrible was going to happen here at Oxford High. But the investigation, of course, continues. Sheriff Mike Bouchard will be with us live tonight on 7 Action News at 7 to talk about this investigation. You can watch our live interview with him in our upfront segment. That's tonight at 7 right here on Channel 7.
We also want to devote much of our newscast tonight to the victims lost in this tragedy. Four young lives lost and countless others forever changed. Dave, it is certainly important we come together as a community tonight to remember these young men and young women. The prosecutor even today, I think you heard her uh, speak live, Dave. She didn't even want to say this young man's name, but once she said we have to focus on the families, we have to focus on the victims. And with faith, I hope this community can heal. Of course, of course it's going to take a lot of time to even finish the investigation, but of course, for everybody to wrap their arms around each other and heal. Dave? Bright, young, talented people lost and our wishes certainly that the others will all recover uh, from this trauma that occurred inside Oxford High School. Carolyn, thank you.